go. Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger, and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Ruby Larimar. But before that, I would like to say thank you for watching the show. It means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. If you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform the present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards, and hypnosis, to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny. I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now each episode will cover various themes of your journey, a guided medita meditation or angel card reading, with the wisdom of my wonderful guests like today's guest, Ruby Larimar, who will be sharing her personal healing journey and how using sound and crystals can help you with your journey. Ruby has clients all over the UK who she works with on various levels tailored to their individual needs. She is passionate about what she does and that everyone can and should be able to heal and reach their full potential. Her experience in life have enabled Ruby to develop empathy and relate to most situations her clients may have experienced. With testimonials including, Ruby is a beautiful soul and amazing healer who works with the utmost integrity, honesty and care. And my first experience with sound therapy with Ruby was like nothing I've ever experienced before. After the session, I felt lighter and utterly relaxed, more than I had for a long time. And now I feel light, centered and whole again. And the issues that once burdened me on a daily basis have been completely removed or rebalanced. So without further ado, hello Ruby and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hi Ray, thank you for having me. I'm wonderful today, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, then please hit the like love button and please say hello to let us know who is here. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates and recordings. Now you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Ruby and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We will say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments once the show is finished. So Ruby, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then how you can help women on their own personal healing journey? So hi Ray, hi everybody. Thank you again for having me on this wonderful show. How, where do I begin? My own personal journey into the world of healing started with having to clear my own trauma that I'd experienced through life. So as a child, I would have not have had a conventional upbringing. And throughout my life, I always believed, I can remember, especially around the age of 12 and 13 years old, remembering that there is destiny. And I always believed in this fundamental belief in destiny. And that was my driving force through life. I would say it was only, I mean, I'm 44 now, so it's only when I was 35, the last decade or so, where I really connected with the power of healing. So for me, it's that inspiration to share my story, to help inspire others, how what I believe is true healing is that when the trauma that you've experienced no longer has an emotional, a physical or a mental hold on you any longer, and you're completely free, and able to live in your life with complete fulfillment as you deserve to do. Okay, so I mean, can we go a little bit deeper into maybe a couple of the traumas that you may have experienced that other women might resonate with that you've worked through? I mean, I mean, once, once you've done the healing, can you talk about them without feeling emotions and that, that connection to them? I think that is the wonderful part of the journey. It is about the ability to share what you've experienced because it is healed. It's if it's not healed, you still are not able to completely have that honesty, share it because it still has scars. So for me, my trauma started from... There were, there were traumas in the womb, but let's just start from the one that I think is quite, people could really res, resonate with and relate to. So from the age of about two and a half, three year old, I was abused, sexually abused right up, up until the age of about 12, let's say. So it's about a good nine, 10 years of sexual abuse. 
So that would be one of my fundamental traumas that then allowed for me to build trauma upon trauma upon trauma. Now, some of them are directly related as a direct result of experienced child abuse. Others are just the normal us being human that we all experience with our ego going through life. So for me, that is where I know now that I've totally healed and cleared that trauma because I can talk about it and hopefully inspire other people to go on their journey to actually be free from whatever emotional hold, mental hold or a physical hold that it has on you. Okay. So do, do you find that um, with the people that you're working with, um, that some find it easier to speak about their trauma than others initially? Um, or are most people really reticent about talking about it when they come and see you? I think most people that do connect with me, there is a resonance there. So people are, I find, quite open. I mean, as you would see from my website, that I actually do what I call multidimensional healing. So that actually means it allows time and space for the talking to take place because it's important for people to have that space, to have that time where they don't feel rushed. So you're talking about sometimes at least an hour, an hour and a half. So I work in morning slots, afternoon and evening slots. So people don't feel they're on a time clock and they've got to rush out. So that also enables them to just completely feel relaxed. I think the other part of it is, is as a, from my bio on my website, you will see that I'm quite honest and open. When people do come to me, I am quite honest and open again to explain that whatever you have experienced, it is possible to move forward and beyond it. I'm lucky enough to have done um, a, about three years work with St Mungo's, a homeless charity. And that was a great experience for me to work with women that are completely distraught. I'm not saying that nobody isn't distraught, but these people have lost their homes. They couldn't find the help that they needed. So that was for me, I guess, a great process enabling me to have that empathy and to actually understand how I can relate to people and to share my message across to people. Uh, that, that, that's, that's really good, you know. A, a, a lot of people don't tend to, um, you know, want to volunteer or help with, with people that are in not worse situations, but they, they, they're not as comfortable in life as we would be with homes and, and stuff like that. So it's really good that you're actually working with, with, those, with those women um, and giving them inspiration and helping them on their journey um, to actually move forward uh, with their life. And I think um, you actually, there's, um, you had a testimonial where one of the um, coordinators at Samungo's actually thanked you about one particular client. Yeah, I mean, she had a similar journey, but I think, I think the quote you're referring to is that I bring hope. So that is what I like to believe, is that I can inspire people, help people to understand that the journey might not necessarily be an easy journey. But there is a process, if you go through the process, that there is that U-turn for everybody, regardless of where you are on the spectrum. I think the reason why some Mungos really resonated with me when they approached me was because I've always fundamentally believed that I've always was one step away from being in a place like St. Mungo's. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Aye. However, I, I just know that I never had that support from family or from friends, not because people don't wish to help you, but people can only help you from where they are. You know, we, people tend to kind of like come from sympathy. So when I talk about my experiences, it's not sympathy. It's empathy and therefore it enables me to have empathy for others. But when you're, you know, growing up, you tend to make friends and then, you know, you share your story. If you were to share your story, that it would necessarily tend to come from sympathy because it's not where they are in that space to hold you or you're not in that space to discuss it for whatever reasons. So for me, that's one of the reasons why St Mungo's was one of my wonderful experiences to be able to really share the work that I had done and to actually inspire people to do the U-turn and to recognise that there is hope and there is whatever path you take, that it can help you. I went through a couple of experiences of having conventional therapy. Now, conventional therapy, to me, helps me to function. So, therefore, you function in society. However, that complete 360, for me, only came through doing the healing process. 
even when I was, you know, I say my, because my earliest age memories are very, you know, like 13, 12 year olds. I don't have young childhood memories. They can be very glimpsing memories. But obviously, as I've gone on the healing pathway and I've gone down the shamanic road and done my shamanic practitioner work, it means I have been able to access memory matrices that have needed to be accessed to help heal and resolve it. However, generally, if you're talking about not saying the average Joe in any disrespect, but you're talking about, you know, everybody going about trying to find how they can move beyond the trauma and to find life. It doesn't mean that they keep on repeating the same cycles of patterns that are destructive or holding them back and thinking, they, here we are again, you know, the cycles of life. So for me, it was healing. And I would say that in my... 20, 18, 19, so 20, I remember going to mind, body and spirit. But for some reason, I didn't connect with healing. I have no idea why, which is, again, which is very apt that how your show is, you know, resonates with me, that destiny, because <clears> it's always about, for me, a time and a place, nothing happens before it's time. So, you know, yes, I connected with um, meditations. Yes, I connected with yoga. Yes, I connected with tarot readings. I connected with many of the esoteric teachings and disciplines that are out available. But for some reason, healing just went right past me. I have no idea how that happened, but obviously it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. It was not meant to be until it was again in my, like, 34, 34 years old, I thought I'd actually gone past my limiting beliefs i'd actually thought i'd gone past help um finding relationships that were much more rewarding not in the same patterns until lo and behold here i am again so then there was this big call out that i made for for hope for spirit to come and guide me and it was a tarot card reader that said to me have you need healing and i'm like healing i'm like what is healing <laughs> all of a sudden i was just like how has that bypassed me and I could not, for the life of me, understand how it bypassed me. But it did, because it obviously it was not meant to be, because through, like as I explained, the trauma that I experienced, there are some traumas that are linked, there are some traumas that I've created, and it's all a combination. So there is that deep tangleness that I had to go through to unravel it all, which I then believe brings me to the space that I am in. I never had the desire to become a healer, it was not what I thought I was going to go down the road to do. However, here I am. Yes. So, there is obviously a reason and a purpose. Yes, and a very good healer you are too. So, what's, um, so what sort of was the first healing you had done? It was actually in a spiritualist church. They said to me, go and try <laughs> healing. I they're, they're pretty good. Point. I must admit, at that point, I was having my dark night and soul moment when I'm just like, I would try anything. And I'm just like, the spiritualist church, and funnily enough, I've gone past the spiritualist church quite a few often times, and I was just like, okay, spiritualist church, try Reiki. I'm like, Reiki? I'm like, what is Reiki? I was like, really? I was like, okay, so off I went, and I did go that next day to stand at spiritual healing. And I had my spiritual healing, discovered energy healing. But then it was this slow connection. I think I went into paganism, you know, connecting with the old traditional methods mm. of healing and with discovering what is healing. That was my initial process. But for me, it was then um, having a relocation chart because even then I still believe I wasn't in the right energy space. There was something not right. And that's what you tend to do is always the exterior. You blame everything outside. You blame it must be that, it must be this. It could be anything but you. So, or what you've experienced, because I didn't understand it. So then I had a relocation chart done and I went off to Brazil. That is where I started, I would say, my real connection back to spirituality and yeah. my connection to crystals. And then coming and then spending time up in the Amazon. I met a shaman, so that was quite good. And then coming back and then, I guess, letting the, it all unravel, really. <laughs> exactly. And, and um, it, it is kind of like when, you, when you're ready to take that next step on your healing journey or learning about healing, healing, the teachers and the situations turn up at the right time. So even if you're not thinking about it, suddenly, oh, this person teaches shame, shamanism. Actually, I need to do that. Or, oh. 
is angelic crakey. I need to do that. But you, but you don't think about it in advance. It's just they come along at the right time for you when it's needed. And that is very true, to be honest with you, Ray. Like, I had no idea when I made the call in 2011 and then the changes on the planet on 2012 of all the astrological and energy change that we all know the lights come down. So therefore, when I talk about right timing, I'm like, well, that was my timing. And that was the fundamental thing that the reader said to me. She said, do I have you do it now? You're never going to do it. And that was, I was like, hang on a minute. I've been trying to do it for how many years? <laughs> so it's funny that, that when you're talking about timing, divine timing, that that is, is your tip. So it is quite interesting. As you would, I mean, Reiki was, angelic Reiki was my reconnection my reconnecting back to recognizing that I am a divine being and that I am born pure as we all are, that our traumas do not define us, that they are our story. But as humans, we connect with our story and that becomes our life rather than recognizing our story is our story. It can have any shape, any form, but we can move beyond our story. And that was my journey. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, you know, that, that's quite a profound way and a, and a good way of, of, of actually trying to explain it, especially to, um, you know, women who, who might be, you know, at that part where, you know, whereas they're, they're blaming, not through their own fault, but because that's the way that it just seems so in the situation is, that it's the external influences rather than the internal, um, internal side. And so I'm guessing when they come and see you or they, um, or, or they go and see healers, um, that that kind of like, they unravel that to you and, and you help them start to see that it's not external, it's internal stuff. Well, that is very true, Ray. So when people do come to me for healing, it is that people tell me what's going on in their life. And then for help them to explain, to understand why they think this external chaos so there's something they're not doing mentally it's just something they haven't discovered yet they do not understand that how the internal is creating a reflection outside so the internal chaos is reflected in a chaos in their outside world so then when i go on to explain to people that how science and spirituality science is finally catching up to what we know yes. to be true so then when i explain to people that every cell every organ in our body has a vibrational new rate that is its true harmonious rate through life our body does not vibrate at its harmonious level so therefore or consciously we think we have resolved it we are thinking positive but yet our body is not vibrating in at its optimum frequency it's still holding the trauma on its emotional level so therefore, until we heal and clear and get the body back to its vibrational rate, whether it breathe through angelic reiki, whether it be through crystals, through sound, going on your shamanic journey, until that is addressed, you are still going to be attracting it because it is conscious awareness and the unconscious awareness, bringing that into, into both processes and for people to understand. So when you explain it to people, they start to think, oh ah okay we can read all the books we can understand it to a level but then i still feel that there are parts that are missing sometimes and sometimes it's maybe too much for a person that has a lot of trauma or even one bit of trauma because that's where their focus is to actually process to actually understand what is happening for them yeah and and i suppose it's when they understand that bit you know that bit of trauma that things start making sense to them and they start the healing journey inside them. Yeah, it's very true. I mean, one of the analogies that I use is that when people come to me, you're like a sponge, you're full. You cannot absorb anymore. You are breaking point. So when the sponge is full, how can you actually have that moment of stillness within you to actually think what it is I need to do? The sponge has to become empty for you to actually be able to catch yourself and to think, okay, what do I need to do? Because ultimately, as much as you are a healer to help support them, you're not the one doing the healing. This is the part that you explain to your clients that it's all about you. I can do my part, but what I do is up to you. It's how much you allow me in that allows you to release, to receive. And once you leave this space, what your capacity is to make the changes that you need to make. 
So for some people, if you are recommending them just to connect with their breath, just to connect with stillness for five minutes a day, if they're not an empty container, they cannot do sit down for five minutes to allow that to happen. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, I, 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 like, I like that idea of the, of the sponge thing and that if you don't have the time to sit down for that five minutes and breathe, that, yeah, there's, you know, you haven't emptied out your sponge, haven't squeezed your sponge out yet. <laughs> you haven't squeezed it out. It's only got so much capacity. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what, that's what sponge full. is. Yeah, <laughs> And exactly. then the sponge is not going to soak up any more water. No, no, I've just got a picture in my head now of a sponge going... <laughs> <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Just right, flash across my mind as, as it does. Um, <laughs> so, um, you do, obviously, you do, um, you're not just a, a mentor, but you also do your own healing as well. So, so, what types of healing? I mean, we know crystal, sound work, shamanic work. How do they all work together? Are there any more you do? Um, I, as I said, I think at the beginning, I said, I, what I call is multidimensional healing. We are all multidimensional beings. We've connected with that term, but what does it mean for me when I'm delivering a healing is to understand as is my motto is to transform your mind, your body and your soul. So a trauma, however small it could be, it could be from when you're at school, for example, with myself, I was trying to learn to play the piano and my teacher told me I was too heavy handed. So I stopped playing the piano so that can leave an imprint and maybe I would never have connected with working with sound I think it's quite funny how I'm actually a sound tutor and working with sound when I was told I could never play the piano and even up until the age of in my early 30s people my, look, my friends would say to me God gave you many gifts but your voice was not one of them so I think it's very funny to say that actually that inspirational moment that sometimes they can leave an imprint, but they may not be true. So that's the process to understand that everything we experience has an effect on the different layers, whether it be on the emotional, the mental, the physical. So when you come for a healing, my process is to bring balance into the body. My, place, my process is to actually release something and then to infuse with the energy they need. So, for example, if someone needs to break old limiting patterns or thought forms or, you know, that inner voice that just does not want to be quiet. So for me, you know, using Amatrine is an amazing, soft, gentle one, because a lot of our, as humans, it is based around our solar plexus area. This is our ego. This is our confidence. This is our power. So this is where a lot of our habitual patterns need to be broken down even if it is to think a little bit more positive or a little bit more with hope and to think actually i don't know what i'm doing right now but there is something out there even if it is connecting with mantras so you know amatrine is always one of my favorites but it is working on those different layers and to recognize when a person comes i could have gone on I don't know, a vast journey. People will say, oh, I've been to about four different places. I'm like, yes, we've been everywhere today <laughs> because we go where it, need, where it needs to go. So as we know that the vibration and the resonance on planet Earth has changed, it allows that facility to take place. Whereas prior to, I would say, before the, the change in the planet in 2012 and 2016, it had to be a slow process because the vibration on the Earth wasn't that high so you could only do one thing at a time so, but now we have this vast amount of energy all supporting us and helping us with transformation it means we can tap into it and we can quickly just dive over here and dive over there and just say yep there we go and it's all completed but at the same time it may sound like you've gone on a world world journey but you haven't because throughout the whole process you're in a calm space you leave the space calm it's just that in my space, as my healing takes place in the metal copper pyramid, it means that your higher self, whatever dimension that you're, you are functioning on, whether it be the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, whichever one it is, if the seventh needs a little bit of healing, we can go to the seventh and do it. If the third only needs it, we're only focusing on the third. So it depends on wherever we are to whichever layer is required for each individual. Yeah. So, so for, for those that are watching that don't know about the um, various dimensions, 
you want to give us a quick explanation of them? Oh, no, <laughs> a quick explanation. Yeah, the, the quick so, version. Quick version. So this, this planet Earth that we live in, this is known as a 3D dimension. It is duality. Then we go into the fourth dimension, where it is a mirror reflection of the 3D aspect. Into the fifth dimension is where we start to connect with sound and we start to connect with telepathy. Then we're going on to the deeper layers or the higher layers or the much more finer layers. So as you go up into the layers, we go into different parts of being. Is that enough or not really explained it? No, like, no. Where the fuck did I... Yeah, no, I, th I, th I think I think I think they'll um, all, 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 all explain it to those that aren't quite aren't, aren't quite sure and, um, about what the different um, di dimensions is. But yeah, I, I know if you were to start going on, I'd probably understand it. But other people from Cape what are you talking about? So, but I, but I think that the key is to bring it into context is to understand this four D reality. This four D reality is the three D dimension, which is duality. So if people is if you're new to healing or new to dimensions, just accepting that this 3D reality is duality and it's about um, as above, so below. So if we can just start to connect with that, that then helps us to be in that process. And then from there, you can go to the zero, which is the core of creation, to where we are really fine resonance of energy. So it, in each dimension has a different healing, it has different attributes that we need to connect with, but that is obviously, like I said, maybe a bit too much to fit into this short talk. Yeah, though, to be. yeah that, 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 that'd be, that'd be, that'd be a, a, another show on another day. <laughs> another we topic might, for you, Ray. But, but we might do that. Uh, um, yes, we might even get, we, we, do, we might do that one live because that should be an interesting one because, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that in the future. I like the sound of that. That's the date we're booked. <laughs> anyway, so, so you're going to get to see Ruby again at some point <laughs> around sometime this year, hopefully. Um, so, so with what type of so with sound healing, what type of sound healing do you do for people? I work with instruments. So I work with the gongs, the Tibetan bowls. I work with percussion instruments, with crystal bowls, and I work with the voice. So um, I am a tutor for the College of Sound Healing and I deliver a accredited sound healing practitioner training course for anybody that is interested. So the voice is to me, I've gone through my layers to be, to be honest. Have I have gone through all the layers and the voice was the last one that brought it all together for me. Yeah. Yeah, I've not experienced Sarah Ruby's voice healing, but I have experienced um, the gongs that she uses, and they are absolutely amazing. That's all I'm going to. That's all I'm going to say. The gongs are amazing. They are always my passion. But then I've also, like I said, they are my ultimate passion. I can always play the gong all day long. But I understand that working with our voice is the ultimate gong. It can yeah. create so many sounds that are far beyond our comprehension. And when we are in sacred space and with intention, it's amazing what the voice brings out. So for me, it is, I wouldn't say the healing of our times, but it is what's giving us the keys. Mm. It, so when we connect with the voice, it is there in its truest and purest form. Yeah, and I, t I totally agree with that. You know, if, if I'm doing any sounding, like when I run an angelic fake workshop, or I'm doing my own personal sounding, I can reach high notes that I couldn't reach if I was to do it now. Uh, with you know, and that that's that's how the energy energy works when you go into those high dimensions. You do reach those much purer, higher notes. Um, yeah, then compared to if I was to try and do it now, I wouldn't get that high. <laughs> I'd sound well, like squealing back. That is very true, Ray. Like I said, I often find myself through healing is going to notes. I think, where did that come from? But then also at the same time, working in a shamanic way, I would never call myself a shaman, but I do say that I work as a shamanic practitioner, delivering it in the traditional ancestral way that's always known to be our true healing. That sometimes we need to create these earthly sounds. And when these earthly sounds come from somewhere, I'm still like, what was that? And even yeah. like, okay. But when you're in sacred space, you trust that whatever comes out is meant to come out. So yeah. I think working with your voice is absolutely amazing. 
Yeah, and and crystals, um, obviously, they're they're such powerful um, he healing tools. And again, I've had um, crystal healing with Ruby as well. Absolutely amazing! Is that you do go on some brilliant journeys. Um, so, I'm. Um, I mean, some people may know, they may not know, um, but different crystals obviously mean different things and they can help with different, with, with different, different things. So, so do you, um, so do people get to choose the crystals or do you um, instinctively know which crystals are best for them? So if I am talking about a client when they're lying down on the couch to deliver healing, it is for me intuitive to select the healings because all, as you just mentioned, each crystal has its own unique vibration, healing attributes. It depends on what the client needs. So therefore, in that sense, if normally if you were to ask a client to pick a crystal, the crystal that they are drawn to is a crystal that they need. So that's a very, you know, if the person sees a whole raft there, that's the one that they need. But as you would know, all crystals speak. They all mm. scream, have me, have me, have me. So sometimes it can get a bit confusing. So that's why I ultimately don't allow my clients to choose. <laughs> I obviously <laughs> decide what crystals that they need. And they would be here for an eternity. I have over, I think, 15,000 crystals from big ones. She's got a lot of crystals. They have a lot of crystals. But yes, crystals are always talking to me, you know, when you go to shows or you go to a shop and you're like, why do you need that crystal? Because I need it. <laughs> Obviously, there is something in that crystal that wants to, there's a healing attribute that you need. Yeah. So the energy of the crystals are really amazing. When you, again, it is intention. I think one of the key things about any healing is his intention. Mm. If you use our intention as to what we want the crystal to do, it will provide it to us. Often yeah. some people just have a crystal, but they don't actually give it a job or give it an intention. So therefore they may not feel it's full vibrational power. Yeah, that, that, that makes absolute, absolute sense. Yeah, people will go in shops and you'll see them pick up crystals and they're looking at it and, and they're sort of like, I'm meant to have this, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it, but I'll take it anyway. And then they just forget about it. And it's like, there's a reason that crystal chose you. You need to work with it. I mean, I would often say for people that do pick a crystal, if you, I mean, Google's so great, with lots of information there, mm. you Google it, you read it, there'll be a word that will resonate and then you'll be like, ah, oh, that's why I need it. And that's sometimes just the one aspect that you need of the crystal, even though it can do many, mm. but it's a word that resonates. You think, actually, if I'm honest with myself, I could do with some of this or I could do with some of that. Yeah. Yeah, but we're almost at the, uh, um, almost towards the end of the show. So, if you had one piece of advice that you would give to um, any women out there um, with regards to um, healing on their journey, what would it be? I would say um, to have a nice conversation with yourself and to reach out to receive whatever help you feel you need to help you take the next step to live in a more fulfilled life and to understand that your limiting beliefs do not let them hold you back and to understand that you do deserve to experience heaven on earth. But it's just going through the layers, clearing what needs to be cleared. But I think it is important to work with somebody. I think it is important to do your own research and to approach whoever it is, whatever you resonate with, and go through the process and the journey to free yourself Absolutely. and live a very fulfilled life. Brilliant. Oh, that's one, that is absolutely wonderful advice. Now, as you know, I do guided meditations, angel card reading. So each week I like to ask my guests, would you like a guided mini meditation or an angel card for yourself and those watching? So Ruby, what would you like? An angel card, please. Everyone always chooses angel cards. I can't think why. <laughs> oh, I why. Yes, we just love cards. Now, as people may know, um, although I work with the past, with past life regression, I work in the future with future life progression. When I do angel cards, everything I do comes back to the present um, because I believe that everyone and we should be in the present. So when I do angel cards, it is for what you need to know for your high school at this moment in time. So what does Ruby and everyone watching this show need to, oh, okay. <laughs> need to know. And we actually had two cards come out, which I think are really, really good. So 
um, we have here, I'm not sure how well they've come up in the thing, we have in the flow, everything is smooth sailing. Lovely. And rainbow blessings, blessings are sharing your life. Lovely. Nice. It is. And it actually um, comes in, in quite well with actually what we've, we've been talking about, you know, though there may be trauma and everything in your life, you've always got blessings around you, whether it's from other people, angels, or even yourself um, and that, and that you really need to be going with the flow of, of, of life and allowing life to unfold as it's meant to unfold for you. Um, does that make sense? It does indeed, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like I said, hidden angels everywhere. Someone says a word, you never know what you need that morning. It could be the person you get your coffee from. It could be the person that smiles at you on your journey to your train. It's any, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, there's blessings everywhere for, for everyone. So everyone, I hope you found, uh, you've enjoyed this and found it insightful and that the words of wisdom Ruby has given you will help you further on your journey. So Ruby, if people want to connect with you, how do they do it? Um, I'd say if you go to my website, you'll read a lot more information about the work I do. So my website is www.holisticruby.london. And I'll, I'll put that in the, um, in the uh, comments underneath so um, people, you can get a quick link to that. So thank you so much for watching. And I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are women who feel lost on their journey and want to get clear on their destiny just like you do. And if you need help in uh, finding and taking charge of your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. So reach out and connect with me as I would love to book a free 20 to 30 minute session by Skype or Messenger with you. So have a quick chat so we can find out more about each other and how I can help you on your journey. So I look forward to seeing you all next Wednesday and I'll see you then. Bye. Bye.